Okay, uh, I think this is back up and running now. Um, dogs went crazy on me here, so I'm going to start. So this is a video that's going to go through all of my uh, chart settings here um, in, uh, in, in Sierra chart. Uh, a lot of different things to cover here, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to use these in whatever platform that you're using. And then also I will cover a bit of uh, a few things that are specific to uh, Sierra chart. Um, like down here, I don't know if you can create something like this in Thinkorswim. I think you can create this or something similar in NinjaTrader, which is the other main competitor of Sierra Chart. NinjaTrader is probably the most popular futures trading platform as far as I can tell, but I like Sierra Chart. I think that people who use Sierra Chart tend to end up liking it more than any other platform for trading futures. That's my opinion on Sierra Chart. So to get started here, the main trading screen is set to 133 trades. In other platforms, that would be called 133 ticks. So if I hit the F5 key here, it'll bring up the settings and you have a number of different bar period types here. And there are tons of different types as you can see. The two alternates to time-based bars or normal candlestick bars that I use are tick bars, which I call trade bars because that's a more accurate term for those, and range bars. So this is set to 4R, for instance. That's what you would type into the keyboard is the number 4, the letter R, and enter if you're in the Sierra Chart platform. That's a bit of a shortcut and it will bring up or change the current period of whatever chart you're currently looking at. I also have attached on the side here a dome with some depth showing here. I don't really use these letters, uh, these numbers here. I don't really use depth in my trading and I don't really use the imbalance. So it's had, it has 50-50 right now, which is kind of standard since it's closed. But I use this mainly so that I can just click somewhere on the chart and it loads up a bracket of some kind, right? So I have a number of different orders here. I have a scaling setup, three leg scaling setup, a two leg scalp, for instance, a two leg scalp if I buy, here you go. And there's a lot of volatility. So normally there's more room here on a much slower day to get my entries and I can always adjust the distance or the profit between the stop and the targets, of course. So there we go. Other platforms I don't think offer as much flexibility in how you're able to structure your uh, targets and your stops and your OCO groups, for instance. So that's definitely another plus for Sierra chart. I'll just go back to basic for now because that's the safe thing. I don't want to have this set on scaling and then come back on Monday and forget that I had it set on scaling for like five to 10 contracts and then start putting a bunch of orders in the market and forget and have it fill on me, <laughs> right? So this is the safe, the safe way to leave the, the chart so I don't mess up. That's happened to me before. So this is a 133 tick chart. Let me go ahead and open the studies that I have applied to this chart. You may be looking below and think that this correlates to this current tick chart, but it doesn't. This is merely the tick chart I have resized here so that I can see the chart underneath it, which is actually the range chart. So if I click on this tab, you can see that this is actually the range chart. So this correlates to the range bars down here. And this, it does not correlate to ticks. You can see my global cursor going left and right here. It doesn't correlate to ticks, but this does give, give me a pretty immediate order flow happening in the market. So for instance, near the close today, we started selling really, really hard and I'm right here, right? 
So my, my cursor is right here and you can see it's coming down really hard here, a lot of volume and we're still up here, right? And this kind of hints at what's, what's gonna happen, like the support, finally the trend finally breaks within the last minute of the day and you move a little bit lower here. So that's pretty useful. On the chart itself, we have two different VWAPs. Um, this yellow VWAP, it's a very thick line, is the VWAP that's formed at the market open, right? So I might as well call this RTH VWAP. I think most platforms have an overnight VWAP. So whenever you load the VWAP, it starts at the beginning of the future session, which is at the end of the day session. So um, I don't know if that is uh, 6 p.m. Eastern when markets reopen globally, or if that counts on other platforms as uh, starting after 4.15 p.m. Eastern or what. The idea there is that the VWAP resets during the beginning of the new session and then goes all the way through. With NQ, I actually do see correlation throughout the day with both VWAP, right? The standard VWAP, the 24 hour one, as well as the VWAP that runs, um, and this is strange that it starts right here too at midnight, right? I didn't, I never noticed that before, but it's supposed to start uh, right up here. So I'm gonna have to go back in settings and, and double check something here. Um, and so you can see that both of them kind of have correlation, right? They kind of have correlation here. Um, throughout the day. I do like the extended VWAP early in the day uh, within the first hour or so and then much much later in the day uh, You know like like a, a couple hours after the first hour a couple hours um, I, I find that the uh, that both Both sort of start showing correlation here, right? Okay, so extended hours VWAP extended Yeah uh, if I click here, let's see. Then this opens things up. Uh, here's the current day RTH, right? Um, the big thing there is to make sure that you have it set for volume profiles, uh, point of control, value area, high, low, and VWAP, right? Have that set up. I also have it use different start time, right? So this is actually drawing the, the RTH VWAP for me. So yes, use different start time, start time, and I have that set to, to start here at 8.30. Uh, end time, um, maybe that's what it is. End time should be, uh, I'm central time, so I just want this to end. Uh, I just want this to end right before 3 p.m. central time. There we go. I'll just save that as default. Cool. Does that work? Yeah, maybe. Okay, I think that, I think that works out. So let me bring that back up. Uh, next, uh, next up, um, cumulative delta bars. I'm on the wrong chart here. There we go. Okay, uh, weekly VWAP. A oh, weekly VWAP is something I loaded up on the suggestion of another trader. I don't like it. Keltner channel is something I was playing around with for a while. That can go away. Linear regression is super old. I used to have a 233 period linear regression on this chart. Uh, don't really use that anymore. So I still have to clean some stuff up here. Um, prior high low. So I, I do like this, the daily open high low close. Right, I have that loaded up here. And what that does is it draws lines, uh, not surprisingly for the open, uh, high, low, and close. Um, I have it set for the prior day so I can see on my chart only really the high and the low. I don't really care about when the market uh, closed or opened the prior day, not in the futures market. Um, so I just have it high and low, which is a solid uh, green line and a solid red line. Um, horizontal line on my charts. Uh, so that's the oh, P here. So that's previous. And then the current day, uh, open, high, low, and close. I really only use the open for that. So uh, let me double check that. I think, yeah, the only thing I have showing here is open. 
It's good to have it set to dash because if you don't do dash, then from day to day, it connects these. So you have, you end up with this really strange, uh, strange line where it's flat for one point, And then there's this diagonal that opens that connects it to the next day's opening price. So anytime you have a level in Sierra chart, select dash, um, you know, because that way it'll behave how you expect it to behave. Time range highlight is just something that I have uh, set up. Time range highlight, there's a transparent version of this. That's what I use. And this just shows the overnight. Uh, I know that futures markets are open 15 minutes after the normal close, but I go ahead and set my session times for um, the, the close of, uh, or my session times to, you know, the overnight to start at the close of the regular session, right? All the way to the open of the regular session. Um, and, and same with my daily for futures too. I want it to correlate to the, to the actual regular session. Um, any, any use that I get out of the overnight, I find to be, uh, will be, will be found, I think in the minutes, right? So if I'm looking at a chart and I want to see the overnight and like the, you know, then, then I'll, I'll see, I'll look back and, and look over like a five minute chart or something like that. But if I'm looking at a daily chart, I, it's almost completely useless during the intraday to use the overnight um, on a, for for daily uh, daily price objectives is the best way price targets countdown time timer this countdown timer is really really useful um, I have it on every single one of my charts you can see over here it gives me a countdown for how how long until the current hourly bar finishes. Uh, same for 15, five minute, etc. If you load it up on a ticks or a trade based bar chart, right in slower markets, eh, maybe it's a little bit helpful, uh, but it shows you how much, uh, how much volume is left before that particular, particular bar finishes out. And on my tick charts, I have it showing right, right here. Let's see here right on the current bar, right next to the current bar, as opposed to having it all over here, right? And then there's just a standard clock here on my main trading window. This light blue line is the opening price of the day. So I find that there's usually pretty good resistance or pretty good um, over under around this, this line. So that played out, right? Again, over under, over on this, it's this area way out. Um, what else here? This blue line is the previous day's point of control. Okay, and the purple line is the current day's point of control. That's set up in the uh, in the volume profile study. Okay, wrong key. One six. Uh, symbol display. I have that hidden right now. Uh, I mean, it's kind of it's useful if I have multiple charts open just to know that I'm not I'm not trading. Um, you know, ES, looking at an ES chart and trading an NQ chart, for instance, those are the two things that I trade the most. Uh, volume, area, lines. Um, this, huh. I guess this is maybe the previous days. Hmm. Yeah, this has to be. This is the previous day's uh, volume area. Uh, you know, of course, opposed to the current day's volume area, right? So that's previous days. Um, I don't even know if I have the current day's volume area high and low set up. Uh, to be to be honest, I I probably here I can probably just hide this. I find that most of the volume profile um, usefulness is really only good on on ES I, on ES. I don't really find it very useful on NQ. So and that's that's the clock. So this is the main trading window. You know, ninety, you know, ninety-nine, uh, ninety percent of my attention is on this window during the day. Everything else around it is is pretty much context. Um, the next interesting window is the range bar window, and really all the same settings as the tick window here, except this is the interesting part down below. This is what uh, probably everyone's really interested in. Uh, so we are, let's see, fifteen minutes in. So I'll just have to remember that, or fourteen minutes in. I'll remember that. Uh, let me click on this. So uh, what's down there? This this line is a moving average, whole moving average, right? But first you need uh, cumulative delta down there. So cumulative delta, and you have trades or volume available. 
Now, cumulative delta is not available in Thinkorswim or many other platforms. I know that it's available in NinjaTrader and probably in other stuff like Multicharts and MT4 or some crap like that. I don't, I don't really use those platforms, didn't really like them. I think I think it's also available in trading technologies. I would be I would expect it to be in Market Delta's platform, but I just don't know. I stick with Sierra Chart. I think it's the best out of uh, out of really all the futures trading platforms, in my opinion, and it can uh, emulate a lot of other platforms setups that you end up paying for extra just to use. Sierra Chart just has it, so. There's my endorsement for Sierra chart, right? Um, cumulative Delta bars, you have uh, trades available, up, down tick volume, and volume. I use volume, so that's what I have set up here. Those are what these bars are, you can see down below, right? So it gives me a really granular look at this, and when you combine it with, uh, with these range bars, right, when you combine it with these range bars, it gives you a really interesting look and I only really played around and, and loaded this up a couple days ago but I like this now the whole moving average that I have applied down here okay uh, I have that set to a 200 period length you know because you're, you're trying to general get a general uh, idea here of bullish and bearish buying and selling pressure right so when I when I loaded this up on the charts let me get this out of the way when I loaded this up on the charts, uh, I played around with a bunch of periods and I really just wanted to see where this was forecasting, um, forecasting, you know, shifts, shifts in, in buying and selling pressure, right? So here, for instance, it starts going green on this, a little blip of red here, but it, for the most part, it starts going green and it ends right up here. So that correlates with starting going green here and ending going uh flipping over to red up here. So even if you were just trading off of that green green average line, uh, that, that uh, particular trade ended up really nicely. And again, if you went short where you started to see this, that was around here, okay? And then you could get out when you first started getting green, it should be around here. So you still, you know, you would have lost while waiting for it to go green, but you would have not been, uh, you would have been able to, to stop it out for profit, right? So. Those are the only requirements. You can play around with this if you like. Um, I have it set to region two. Uh, underneath the main graph is what I have on virtually all my studies. Uh, come over here to subgraphs and change this auto coloring based on slope. That's what gives me the color, right? And then choose your two colors here. I, for my charts, um, you know, a lot of the colors are have to be transparent and uh, I go with the general theme of like a highlighter. Right, because the main thing, the main focus I want on my charts will be the bars, will always be the bars, right? Uh, so I don't want anything getting in the way of a clear view of the bars on my chart. Um, same, same down here. So um, that's why everything is behind the bars, and everything is uh, most most of the lines, like like uh, moving average lines, are like a highlight highlighter color. You know that uh, doesn't doesn't pop doesn't stand out too much. You know all the all the candle bars go over the lines and everything else, right? So that's uh, that's what's set up on this chart here. Over here, uh, there is there are these vertical uh, or sorry horizontal resistance and support lines over here on the sixty minute chart, and that's something that I will note. Let me open up the studies that I have here. Uh, a lot of the same stuff. Going on, I'm trying because uh because Horn in the chat room has uh, really liked taken a liking to um, Ichimoku. I went, I'm going ahead. I've gone ahead and um, uh, added that to the charts. I'm just evaluating it. I like I like some of the stuff on there. Um, you know, is uh, is maybe another another layer of context, and you know, for all the time time bar. Uh, base charts uh, context is king to me, right? I just want to know what the context is. So we have that loaded up. The main the main thing that's actually useful there are, is the span, the Senku span A and B. Uh, here is what's listed. Um, you can see that you can actually uh, separate out each span, right? But A and B is what I have. It's the most useful part of that. I have 
I had to change this on subgraphs. I had to change this uh, fill style to transparent fill top. And then whenever you do that, it, it fills the entire screen, excuse me, with, with color and it's really annoying. So you do have to remember to go to the other span and do transparent fill or transparent fill bottom as well. Because if you don't have both of those set to transparent fill, then it will flood the entire screen with color, right? But if you do use both of them in the right place, then it, it plays out exactly as you expect here. It creates a cloud, so that's really nice. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that you could probably do that with things like moving average ribbons, right, uh, that I have set up as well, but there's no point in that, not in my opinion. Um, I, I've left everything else default here. And of course, draw underneath the main price, price uh, graph, okay? And I've left the color alone as well. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. If you, if you don't have transparent fill, then when you try to make a drawing on the chart, so, you know, when I come in here and I want to make a Fibonacci drawing, right, from, from the bottom of the day uh, up to the next, you know, the next uh, candle bar, you know, we'll pretend that only this bar is finished and this one opened and it's pulling back, right? Um, that'll give me my Fibonacci's that I need. Uh, and if I can't see that, like if I'm, if I'm all the way up here, for instance, and I don't have the cloud set to transparent, then it will occlude or block all of these fib lines, right? <laughs> so I'll make a drawing and I won't be able to see any of these Fibonacci lines and, um, uh, on the hourly. That's really, really annoying to me because I, I do want to see on the hourly if there's correlation. So that's why it's important to change that to transparent fill and transparent bottom. The other things on the chart... Um, to mention here is uh, another idea lifted off of uh, horn in the room here is uh, our Woody's pivots. Um, regular pivots, I don't think work really well with, uh, with NQ, which is why I always just wrote them off as being useless, but Woody's uh, work really well. Sierra chart doesn't have pure Woody's the same way that Thinkorswim does. And also Sierra chart Woody's change depending on what time frame you have. So I, I Try to just keep it on the 60 minute. Formula type three is the one closest to the Woody's formula. Uh, and I I say closest because it might actually be the Woody's formula, but Thinkorswim has Woody's built in, and I think Thinkorswim has a better version. Whatever, whatever application, wherever they start it, however they calculate it, it, it seems to be better on Thinkorswim. Um, and it's I have it loaded up here. And I'm not really sure if I'm getting a nice correlation off of it. I think Thinkorswim ends up being the better of the two. So I'll probably end up, uh, well, I'll probably end up hiding it. But if you're curious, if you want to test it out on your chart, then that's that's a good thing to do. I will say that whatever pivot formula this is, the actual pivot point, the the middle line that's not support or resistance lines, um, is is actually very good, right? So I don't know. Uh, moving average, every one of my time-based charts has a 200 simple moving average on it. So that's lined up. It's usually the white thick line. Uh, clock, we already know about that. Current price lines, not a big deal. Moving averages, I use three moving averages, the 8, the 21, and the 50. I used to rock the 34 for that, you know, complete tri uh, Fibonacci trifecta there. But, you know, I find that the 50 has better, better correlation. So I go with the 50, the 21, and the 8. You know, um, that's just what it is. And that's similar across, across all the time charts here. I think, I think that's everything. There are a few things uh, I'll go into here just, just for my general trading setup that I think is useful. And, and this stuff will only apply to, to Sierra chart members. Uh, you know, first and foremost, this cursor. My default cursor is set to crosshairs or chart value tool. Um, I have a global cursor on, so tools, global cursor. Uh, symbol cursor does exactly the same thing, but it only applies to charts where you have the same symbol. Um, I actually do like to have global on because if I have, if I'm trading ES and NQ side by side, I kind of want to see how they reacted at similar times during the day. Uh, another thing that I set up here is, you know, if I'm if I'm on my main trading chart and I'm looking for some Fibonacci confluence, right? Like if I'm back here and I want to look for the 382 trending fib, 
right? And then I'm gonna come down to this and this is gonna draw on the charts, right? So now if I'm back a few days, you can see that it appears up here. So the way that you have that set up is you find the chart that you want it to appear on, hit the F5 key, come over to advanced settings two, there we go. And you put in the chart numbers and the chart numbers are gonna sh be shown up here in like this fine print, like this is chart number one. It's right after the time period. This is chart number eight, you know, uh, number two down here. So you just, you just uh, put these in, you separate by commas and all your, your drawings from other charts will appear over here. Uh, something that's another interesting thing that I have on the regular five minute and 15 minute. Here are the envelopes, right? And of course, recently this, this hasn't been playing out because of all the increased volatility, but most days the envelopes work out really well. So let me click on F6 and show, uh, show how that's um, calculated. I, I have managed to get um, envelopes to work on Thinkorswim, but they're based off of percentages, not fixed values. I actually like fixed values, um, although maybe there's an argument that percentages uh, are, are good, a little bit more flexible and universal. Uh, and maybe I'll come back and I'll look at that, um, you know, the effect of, of switching over to a percentage during some of those volatile times. I just find that most of the time, it's better just to load something up uh, with, for instance, here, this is based on a 200 simple moving average, and it's uh, drawing a line that's parallel to that 110 points up and 110 points lower. And then also there's one that's 60 points up and 60 points lower, right? And I find that that typically for where, where NQ is now, that seems to provide a lot of correlation. And you can kind of see that here. We, we dip below, but we come back in, find support. We're kind of orbiting this 200. We come up, it looks like a 60 point thing is the general general amount of, of deviation happening uh, on the five minute, you know? And you just have to play around with the values. I also have it on the 15 minute. Uh, it seems to work well. Uh, I don't have it on the hourly though. I just have the, the 200 moving average on the hourly. Um, session times, that's another thing. Uh, session times, I have that set up in the symbol values. So symbol settings. So if I go into symbol settings and I come down to, uh, sorry, oops, sorry, symbol settings and I come down to whatever the, the funky NQ thing is for, um, for CQG, then I have that selected. I come to intraday and I put in the times. I actually have it set to New York right now, but you know, I can flip that back and forth again. The thing to note is that I, I end my day period a, a second before the regular market end, even though it continues. And then I start my, my overnight during that 15 minute extra time. So as soon as the market closes, that's overnight to me. And the overnight ends when the market reopens. Uh, that's just important because um, something about the hourlies on Sierra chart is that the hourlies tend to start on the half hour. And it shouldn't, you'd think, well, that doesn't really make a difference. It makes a huge difference because for a very long time, uh, the hourly, especially in the beginning of the day, um, was completely useless to me, right? I just, it would break a moving average and close there. It wouldn't make any sense. And it turns out that if you just shifted by half an hour, the start of your hourly candles, it made all the difference in the world as far as finding entries um, based on one hour context and moving averages, which is a big deal, you know? So that's, uh, that's something to, to definitely check out and keep in mind is to, to correct, I guess, that session time thing going on with Sierra chart, uh, desktop version of Sierra of thinkorswim does it. I know that the mobile version of thinkorswim is actually strange in that it starts on the half hour, like Sierra chart does by default. So the mobile and the desktop versions of the hourly charts for Thinkorswim are actually different. So some inconsistency there with their company. Okay, what else do I wanna talk about? Custom short, shortcut keys. So in the global settings uh, area, I go, I have uh, custom keyboards, keys set up, and a lot of this has to do with the tools that I'm using. So I use Fibonacci's a lot. So on my, mine, I have that set up uh, for 
uh, shift F brings that up. And I, the, the idea there is that I can have my hand on my right hand on the mouse, and then I can have my left hand, uh, you know, over on the keyboard and I can just keep it on the home row and I can hit shift. And then I have all the all the things that I I want available to me, right? Like ellipse is Shift Q, um, extending rectangle I use a lot is Shift R for me, uh, and you can program these in however you want, right? And there's uh, where's price Fibonacci, price retracement I think is the Fibonacci here, um, Shift F, right? So that's on my keyboard. That's the one with the bump, so I can just be absolutely sure to have that, uh, and that's my most used thing. Um, there is a nice shortcut here as well with, with alerts that you can do. So you can set up your horizontal, right? So I actually have this uh, shift A on my, yeah, shift A is my, uh, does the horizontal line. And the reason I hit shift A is it's, it's an alert. So for me anyway, the default horizontal line, if I look at the properties here, Uh, here we go. The default actually has an alert set up. So it triggers once, It whenever it crosses, doesn't really matter, any part of the bar crosses and it changes the, the appearance of that drawing to a different, a different setting, right? So uh, it, makes an, it makes a sound and then it also looks like this after, right? So it changes color on me too. So I know that it, it triggered, uh, triggered for me. Um, here we go. So load that. All right. So that's that's just how I place alerts really quickly on my chart. You know. So if I were to control or shift A, and then place something here. So I want to know if, if it breaks lower, then perfect. And whenever price breaks lower, it uh, gives me a sound, and that's good. Another thing that is really really useful to me is uh, I think control S is or shift S is my you know goes back to my my standard cursor in my default, but uh, recently I found that if you go to global settings and tool settings, that you can actually have this set up so that after a single use, tool use, it goes to hand, right? That's my default. And I guess it has these uh, crosshairs on it because I probably have crosshairs enabled somewhere, uh, somewhere around here, you know, to, to be open like all the time to always have crosshairs on. Um, yeah, there we go show crosshairs vertical and horizontal all the time, not just when using the, the CVT tool, the chart values tool or crosshairs. So it defaults back to hand. So I can make a drawing. It took, took me a while to get used to this. I can make a drawing and you know, 99% of the time after I would make a drawing, I just need to edit it a little bit, right? But if you don't have that, uh, that go back after single use, if you don't have that enabled, then it stays, it actually stays within, like you, it would keep you, you would just keep on drawing Fibonacci's over and over and over again until you remember to switch, right click and switch back to hand or, you know, use a shortcut tool. Now uh, I can just make the drawing and after I'm done drawing it, it goes right back to the hand tool, which is exactly what I want. I also have a delete shortcut there. So I can do things like really, really fat, like really, really quickly. And of course the market's moving. And if I wanted, you know, find the 38.2 retracement Fibonacci, so we get a breakout here. And I want to know as it's going up where, where the 38.2 retracement is. It's right there. You know, we put in a top, comes exactly down to there and boom. That's why I call the 38.2 the trending Fibonacci because it's, you know, whenever you come down from that, it's normally if you, get a good response off of that and you're, you're relatively early in the move, then it's going to shoot, shoot through for a full extension. But that's kind of teachy. It's just something I've noticed. Um, but you have to be able to do that really, really quickly. You know, uh, same, same going to the, uh, to the downside here, right? You get a little breakout here and I want to see where the 38 to, uh, retracement is boom. It's right there, right back down. But this is all happening really quickly, right? You know, you get a breakdown from this this area. This uh, 1030, 10:30. Well, this, it breaks down right over here, 10:37, and you get this retracement, 10:44, right? So it's relatively. Uh, that seems relatively quick, especially when you're in here and you're trying to figure out, like, oh gosh, where can I get an entry to go short? Well, that's how you do it. That's how I do it anyway. Um, yeah, so I, it's good to be able to pop in and out of that. Uh, what else? What else? Reset to hand default, custom sounds. 
And if, you know, if you if you're interested in custom uh, sounds for Sierra Chart, then you just have to go find a bunch of WAV files uh, in my general settings. If I go over to alerts and I go uh, select the sound file, um, I've in the in the home area of the Sierra Chart install uh, directory. Um, you know, there's an alert sounds folder. If you drag in some wave files, then you can, you can get the wave file that you want. Right. So, uh, I happen to have found a bunch of street fighter, uh, street fighter video game sounds because I just like that better. You know, it makes it a little bit more interesting for me. Um, so, you know, if I want to load in the sonic boom, whenever the price gets hit then I'll hear, yeah, there you go. So, uh, it's kind of fun. Right. Um, Let's see, cancel, and let me see if that uh, general settings, there we go, alert sound, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, I, I don't think I actually use price met for anything, so whatever. And that's, that I think is everything. That's everything on here. Um, you know, I, I, uh, it, I think it was important for me anyway, for Sierra chart users to really that, that one thing about having the chart drawing tool goes back, going back to, to your default hand tool and, uh, also having, uh, shortcuts for Fibonacci's and for alert lines and circles and extending rectangles, you know, like, uh, extending rectangles are super useful on range on a range bar chart, right? Because, uh, with range bars, you know, with range bars, you you have you have stuff going on where you just have a lot of a lot of noise happening, right? And if you're if you're looking for retracement on a range bar, then you might you might see this going on, and you're like, okay, well, I gotta pop off. Uh, I didn't really use the thing. I didn't really use my shortcut, but I, there is a shortcut for it. I guess here we go. That's hand shortcut for a rectangle. I'd say, okay, well, this is this area is about where. I would look for uh, retracement and then rejection, right? And sure enough, we come down there, we reject off of it, right? Because you had you had some volume put in there. Um, there we go. And that's usually usually that's that's after like you know um, before like a nice big extension uh, happens one way or the other, right? Um, okay. I think that's it. I'll go ahead and post this. This is a long ass video. 37 minutes. Jeez. Um, everyone have a good weekend. Later.